Welcome to Star Citizen and an Arena Commander Guide for the Pirate Swarm Mode. In this guide we will go into detail about one of the many game modes of the Arena Commander, the Pirate Swarm. Here we can unlock the Pirate Gladius and Pirate Caterpillar for the Pledge Store. Originally, today's Arena Commander was the dogfight module and thus the beginning of Star Citizen spaceship battles, which we can also see in this almost antique in-game trailer, so all the more reason to take a closer look at this mode. But a warning in advance, the Arena Commander unfortunately does not enjoy the highest priority and has regular bugs and problems, which however mainly result in getting into a round at all. And as the first guide outside the Persistent Universe, it is our goal to guide you safely through the Pirate Swarm and to give you tips, hints, and of course as much fun as possible. Therefore, as usual, step by step with timestamps so that you can jump to the places you are interested in. And as a small reward, a completely free Spectrum badge awaits you with which you can show that you have mastered this challenge. To get into the Pirate Swarm mode, which is then also rated and grants you the unlocks, you have to go into the multiplayer mode, as you can play the same mode in single player, but you won't be rewarded with the unlocks. We then select the Pirate Swarm mode and can use the invite function to take another player into battle with us. One small note, this player receives the invitation in the main menu of Star Citizen and not in the Arena Commander. Under Select Rent Ship, we have access to all ships that are available in our hangar or loaner ships. You can find more information about this in the dedicated pledge store guide here in the channel. Another special feature of the Arena Commander is the currency Wreck, the rental equipment credits, which we can use only to pay for components, weapons and ships here. And we can earn these wrecks mainly only in the Arena Commander or via special hangar packages. We equip a ship and save it once, which then makes it active, there is no display of the activated ship. When your team members have activated ready, the group leader can start the game, all through the aforementioned bugs can always occur. If the jump into the game was successful, all participants must confirm their readiness with the X button and the Pirate Swarm mode begins with the first of a total of 10 waves, whereby these increase in intensity and difficulty. And here we have three attempts at the beginning, re-entry tokens, which are consumed after a kill, but can also be earned during the individual waves. And here is our first recommendation for beginners, rent the Miss Freelancer, preferably a Freelancer Miss variant, as this series of ships has a complete gimbal, a target support, a standard and is absolutely sufficient for this mode even without extensive pilot skills. And as we have just seen in the lower right corner, New enemies spawn after each completed wave, which becomes stronger and stronger here, in terms of ship types, but also in the flight abilities of the AI. The next tip for beginners is to use your ship's missiles, especially from about the fifth round onwards, as your missiles often make short work of the enemies and you will not be forced into sprawling battles against many enemies. This is because missiles and ammunition are available in this rather aircraft heavy mode unlike in the verse, in the form of power-ups as supplies. And these power-ups are displayed as colored symbols floating in space after you have shut down an enemy. All you have to do is fly through them and you will receive ammunition, rockets or even a repair. But we will come back to the repair mode in more detail later. So we fight our way through enemy by enemy and wave by wave. At this point, I can also highly recommend our space combat guide. There you can learn with very simple means how to survive longer in a room fight and how to avoid enemy fire effectively. You can find the link in the video description or in the channel. Things get interesting in the final wave 10, which features a heavy gunship, an Aegis hammerhead, as well as countless small snap fighters the smallest fighters in the game. Yeah. 
And here a general tip. Focus completely on taking out the small P-52 Merlin Snapfighters. These are fast and few, but not very strong defensively, which means you can take out a lot of them in a short time. Because if we out enough of them, we get support. Got some help. Stand by. And this support also comes first in the form of snuff fighters, whereby we continue to focus on the enemy P-52s. Because when we have eliminated a critical mass here, we receive the final support in the form of powerful ships that support us in the final battle against a massive hammerhead. And with this help, we then choose the hammerhead as a target and attack together. Dodge, shoot and win is now our final item on the to-do list. Congratulations, Pirate Hunters and Wreck, we earn right along with it. But let's move on to the Advanced Pirate Hunters or anyone looking for a little challenge. Because we can also play this mode in a Snap Fighter, which increases the difficulty significantly due to much less firepower and a lack of defensive capabilities. Here our piloting skills are more in demand and we have to regularly seek cover from missiles and our time required to take out an enemy is also significantly higher due to our manageable damage output. However, it is definitely fun with a small, few and actually inferior microship to get our opponents out of their ejection seats. Power-ups are even more interesting and we regularly look out for the rare repair keys that only appear once in each wave. But here we take the opportunity to demonstrate what happens if we don't focus on the enemy snap fighters in the last wave or take them out in time. Because then our own support is missing and we have to take on the hammerhead alone. Especially with the snap fighter, our firepower is too limited to inflict enough damage to penetrate the shields or even cause critical damage. But here we can still outsmart the AI to achieve success after all. Let's take a look at what that looks like here. We bait the hammerhead and retreat behind asteroids again and again, whereby we are safe from the torpedoes and provoke the enemy to move into too narrow an area. Because such an XXL rock is then also deadly for a hammerhead. But since this is less to be explained by our ingenious flying skills than by the lack of AI capacities, I wouldn't be so quick to point this out. However, we can still complete the pirate swarm, find the last remaining enemies, take them out and get rewarded. But the Pirate Swarm is also worthwhile for trying out new ships, which we can simply borrow here, new weapon loadouts or simply as a fun action morsel for in between. Mm -hmm. 
Not only is the general game performance in the Arena Commander significantly better than in the Persistent Universe, we are also not confronted with long flight suit missions, problems with route planning or other bugs that we unfortunately encounter more often in the Persistent Universe. And of course, you can adjust and test your controls, eye tracker or graphic settings here in peace, without being affected by other players or server problems. But we wanted to take a closer look at the repair power-ups. These are available once in each wave, but they disappear again after a short time. So it's worth paying attention to them so that you don't miss these rather rare opportunities. Of course, a gentleman must consult with his team member. And to activate it, you just have to fly straight through the yellow banner symbol. And another tip, as soon as you reach wave 10, the hammerhead spawns relatively centrally with its escort. You should not be in the center here, otherwise you will be worn down very quickly and have to respawn. But pictures say more than thousand words, so I don't want to deprive you of this tour de force. We simply stayed in the center and hunted, without noticing that we are already being locked by some opponents. And then escape was no longer an option. Well, such a respawn often has liberating effect. Especially since we come back into the game with some distance, provided we have a respawn token on our account. In conclusion, I can only recommend that you play the Pirate Swarm at least once and collect your reward. And with the wreck you've earned, you can borrow first before spending your hard-earned UAC on it in the verse. And as a reward, you will receive the following, an email to your account confirming that you can now call yourself Pirate Aggressor and the Spectrum Badge which you can activate in your account. And by the way, in the plush store you get the option to buy the Pirate Gladius and Pirate Caterpillar, but you can't upgrade to these ships from an existing ship, so no lifetime insurance is possible at this moment. I hope you enjoyed the video and leave me a like and a subscribe here. The Arena Commander is a nice gimmick and we can have quick and easy action here. Test new equipment and ships and use it as a test environment. But what do you think about the Arena Commander? Is it useless, long outdated or a useful feature? I always look forward to your comments, either here in the video or in our Discord. But the most important thing at the end, the big thank you to all Patreons, channel members and Twitch subscribers. You are a really strong motivation and make the whole thing possible in the first place. Thank you. You guys rock! And of course there are a lot of really interesting giveaways again, but too many to list here in this video. Definitely take a look at the giveaway announcement video here, it is worth it. You can find the link to the video directly in the channel. I say goodbye, until next time and hope to see you soon. And always, see you in the verse.